Following the trail of spice shipments, we made our way up to Nunavut Bay, Canada, the secret of Jean Besson's shipping empire. As a young man, he trekked across Canada to strike it rich during the gold rush of 1852. An avid prospector, he took some chances and ended up buried alive in an avalanche. Miraculously, the quick freeze kept him alive, and 120 years later, thanks to global warming, he thawed out. A product of his time, he dreams of taming the wild north, damming every river and chopping down all the trees, with progress delivered at the sharp end of an axe. Shipping spice for the Claw Gang proved a lucrative way to bankroll his one-man war against nature. And yet, I have to feel a little sorry for him. He's just a normal guy from the 1850s. Back in his day, he'd be a hero, but today, he's a villain. Either way, that man's got more than his fair share of the clockwork parts. What a low-tech guy like Jean Bassan is doing with robot parts is a mystery. I almost don't want to know. But as always, it's only a matter of time before I find out. Parts and brutality.
rustic, but don't be fooled. It's the control center for Jean Bizon's trade empire. Sneak inside and raid his files. You're sure to find out where he keeps his clockwork parts. Ransacking his files doesn't sound hard. Now, climbing up a sheer rock wall? That'll be a challenge. You're in luck. Before Jean Bizon took over, this used to be a popular destination for rock climbers. Some of their old wall hooks are still around. I'm guessing I just jump and hit the circle button to latch on. That's right. And remember to lean back before you spring off the hook. You'll get more altitude. Thanks for the tip. I'll give it a try. Looks like he didn't notice me come in. Just stay out of sight and take a picture of each of his train routes. They should narrow our search for his share of the clockwork parts. All right, I'm on it. Hello, Arpeggio here. Salutations, Mr. Arpeggio. Y'all got time to shoot the breeze? Of course, for you, chum, always. Although, must we communicate through that dreadful speakerphone? Yeah, I can think better while my legs move. Pumps blood to your brain. Yes, of course. One must keep blood in one's brain. But do tell, is there some pressing matter you'd like to discuss? First off, are you still a-coming on schedule to get that Northern Lights battery? Yes, we're well underway. My blimp should arrive at the end of the week. Bullseye. For a second, when you gonna give me a look-see at that clockwork brain of yours? I'd sure like to buy it off you. We saw you cover this troglodyte. You've already got the lion's share of the parts. Would you take my meager portion? Sly, did you hear that? We saw it's hidden the Iron Horse blueprints in his trophy bass. Head for the fish on top of the fireplace and steal those plans. Easy there, partner. You're all up in a lather. Now get out of that cabin before you're spotted! Sounds like you're making capital use of your share of the robotic loot. But for now, the clockwork brain stays with me on the blimp. Although, when I arrive to pick up the Northern Lights battery, I might be persuaded to give you a peek. That'll do fine. By the way, are you ready to giddy up in...
above the fireplace. Be careful. Attention all cabin guards. I've heard tell from the boys at Ponderosa Cabin there's someone invented my hidden blueprints. Everyone. Exceptional work, Sly. That's the last of the blueprints. and track the iron horse trains through that satellite dish. Top of the mountain, huh? Shouldn't take long. Thanks to Sly's efforts, we now know the location of all three of the local clockwork parts. Two lugs and a stomach. John Besson has grafted each piece to the engine in one of his iron horse trains. This improvement allows the trains to run all night and all day. We won't have the luxury of sneaking in while they're stopped. While they're in motion, the only way aboard is through a hatch on the caboose roof, which unfortunately has been locked down. These need to go. First, collect the spice gas from the balloons above town, and then land on the back of the caboose to blow off the locks. Once the way is cleared, I'll suit up and jump into Iron Horse number one while it passes near town. With some luck, we'll have the first clockwork lug in a few hours.
we need to break into the Iron Horse trades, but the only way in, through the caboose, is locked. To blow the locks off, you'll need to collect the ultra-unstable, denatured spice gas from those balloons floating above town. How am I supposed to get up there to collect the spice gas? Murray's already commandeered this ice plane. Jump on its strut, and he'll fly you up to a good paragliding altitude. Oh, and strap on a special vacuum backpack. It'll automatically collect the spice gas after you've popped a balloon. Sounds like fun. Once you've collected enough gas, you'll have to land directly on the train's caboose. Why directly on the caboose? Denatured spice gas is very unstable at lower altitudes. Unless you land on the caboose, you won't have time to get the gas tank to the lock before it blows up. So you're saying I either land on the caboose or get blown to bits? That's correct. Chemistry can be a harsh mistress. Come <laughs> on. 
Target the last caboose! 